I'm struck that whenever we signed a Good Friday Agreement 25 years ago, you and I couldn't have been sitting here in East Belfast. So if you're 15, 16, 17, you, you don't know, with respect, what it was like to watch the news where people were being shot, bombed most days. And it's hard to imagine that if you haven't lived on it. But whenever uh, I was the age of the school pupils here, that was regular. Um, you, you would have grown up uh, uh, in the midst of all of that. Part of our conversation this morning on paramilitarism um, was, I don't want to call it the new age paramilitarism, but, but the conversion to what some paramilitaries I know describe as low-level criminality. <laughs> You know, so the move from kind of in, into drugs and in, into gangs, away from a violence that has some sort of patriotism, whether it's nationalist or loyalist, behind it. How do both of you think, and we'll start with you, Colm, is it actually possible to move a society away from violence? Because we've maybe moved from one sort of violence into another. Um, how can we actually do that? Bearing in mind, I ask you first, because the journey that Sinn Féin has come on in the last couple of decades in this, remarkable, and the history books will say so. Uh, how do we do the next bit and try to, to take out the low-level criminality and that side of violence? Well, I think, actually, for me, the problem is really high-level criminality. And, and what we have seen and what we are increasingly seeing is former paramilitaries from across even the, the former political divide, now cooperating in criminal, in criminal enterprises and cooperating with their counterparts in Dublin and with their counterparts in Colombia and Spain. So it's become a very sophisticated issue. I think, I think really what we need to do is call it for what it is in the sense of recognizing it as a crime. And we do sometimes skirt dangerously close. And we have in recent days, you know, I hear people saying, asking Jeffrey Donaldson what the LCC thought about the, about the deal. And I think you need to divorce people who are involved in selling drugs and people who are genuinely trying to move their community forward on the, on the basis of, of, you know, being involved. Again, I don't think we should exclude, like we should, we should be tough on crime, but in terms of moving any kind of paramilitary connection to that, we should separate them out and decide who is, who is genuinely trying to transition out of a conflict past. And every society has criminality and a certain percentage of criminals, those need to be dealt with on a, on a justice basis. But we also need to deal with all of you know, the poverty, the lack of uh, educational attainment in areas. We need, we need to go in, we need to invest in our people in that sense as well and not leave them at the mercy of drug gangs or loan sharks. So I think it's complicated, it's an ongoing piece of work. It's a piece of work every society have. We're not unique here in having it. We are unique in that there is that crossover now, but I think we need to call it out for what it is. People are drug dealers, they're drug dealers. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Peter? Um, yeah, so, so in terms of paramilitaries, I think language is an important thing. Um, so I don't think they're paramilitaries. I think they're criminal gangs. In East Belfast in particular, so whenever you're leaving, if you look across the road, I think it's just across the road to the right or the left, it says uh, property of the UVF um, on, I think, the top of the wall. It's been there since maybe the 70s or the, the 60s or something like that. Even just if you're getting to spend time today in East Belfast, and there's a number of murals here uh, dedicated to the UDA, to the UVF. And I was, I was engaged in a bit of a Twitter spat with um, a councillor um, a year or two ago, and there, there was a, a sort of Freedom Corner in East Belfast, which is just up the road. Um, there's a, a mural to the UDA and it has uh, men marching, which recreates uh, something that happened in the 70s, I think. Uh, they're all wearing sunglasses and uh, it's quite a menacing looking uh, mural and I was quite, I condemned it quite a lot on Twitter. And this politician said that he thought it was akin to street art was the phrase that he used. And I thought, well, I'm quite into street art, uh, you know, going around Europe and everything else, going to art galleries. That's not street art if you're boasting about the, the UDA. Outside my office, a flag appears every year, a brand new UVF flag, just as a gentle reminder, maybe, from a, a criminal gang to the Alliance Party that they're present. Um, I think we need to support um, the Justice Minister, the criminal, ta the Paramilitary Criminal Task Force, uh, in terms of them cracking down on these guys, because it's coercive control, it's overt control as well of communities, and they're not everywhere in East Belfast. They focus on communities that are in desperate need. During COVID, we saw that there was a spotlight documentary done about this, that 
paramilitaries are watching food banks in East Belfast, the larder just around the corner from here, up the road at uh, Orangefield uh, Church, watching who was coming out, following them home, going to them the next day, saying, look, we can give you some money if you, if you need any help, um, infiltrating the food bank, being one of the volunteers, finding out who was in need, and then being able to go to them to offer them some money because they knew they needed help, and then exerting control on them in terms of if they're not able to pay it back, we'll go and deliver some drugs for us. Those are the things that we need to really fight back against, push back against, and stop what I heard when I was Deputy Lord Mayor about in Northern Ireland how we've normalised the abnormal. I think it's abnormal that we have the normalisation of paramilitary criminal gangs through these murals, through flags, through how people behave and the control that they exert on our communities. So if we are able to crack down on that with stable and consistent government, which I'm always talking about, um, hopefully we're going to be in a better place.